Retro Maniacs. We are back with a big one. As you know, I'm back from my one episode suspension from the headbutt the mailman comment. 905 member Dave H stopped by to surprise Retro today with that red chrome Eleanor. Actually, good deal from eBay, so no need to headbutt the eBay eBay seller. Retro Chilla was a joke, big dog. I get it now. No more headbutt jokes unless it is towards the Centennial Night Scalper. This episode of Retro Collectibles Crack It features a car from the Herod Diecast collection and was filmed in front of a live studio audience. Oh, the awesomeness of the Shelby Collectibles Eleanor guy, which I tell you is the best one going if you want an Eleanor. That looks like pink to me, and I love it even more if it's pink. Beautiful, though, guys. Can't wait to get into that, and that is a rare sucker. Okay, guys, as you heard, we're in front of a live studio audience because this is a big one. Our friend Dave H. brought it over. What I was saying to him is people talk rare, rare, rare all day, okay? They say the word rare. You want to know how something's rare? Jump on eBay and type it in or jump on Google. See how many come up for sale. This right here, there's some Chinese website that does not look legit, wants 4,000 yen. And there's another website that I've never heard of. But there are none of these for sale right now on the internet that I see. Could there be one somewhere on Kijiji in like Mississippi or somewhere like that? Maybe, I don't know, but there's none on any major, like eBay, if it's not on eBay, it's rare. Okay, just showing you guys the features. Now this, if you guys remember, I tell all you guys, if you want an Eleanor, a 1 of 18 scale Eleanor, you want the best of the best, Shelby Collectibles. Not green light, and I'm talking 1 of 18, not green light, not anything else, Shelby Collectibles. This has all that detailing, but it's a chase, and it's rare, and we're going to get into this. As you see, the box, the car on the box is gray because it's, like I said, it's a chase. It could have been back in the day you ordered one and got this as a surprise. Can you imagine that? You order, and some of these, we found them in blue, different colors. There's some of these as low as one of 200. We're trying to get a number on this one, but guys, there is none of them on eBay, if that tells you anything. So we're very excited. I'm hoping there's a number plate on this, but let's get into this. So guys, very exciting. I'm gonna show you a second car after we're done this uh, that uh, he also grabbed that we're gonna check out, not in this video, but we're gonna check it out. Um, but he was nice to bring this over to show you guys, specifically to unbox here to show you guys. And that thing, I love it because it has a pink hue. I would rather it be pink. And I'm seeing pink and I'm in love with that thing. Wow. I like it more seeing it in person than I did in the pictures he sent over. And looking at it from this angle, just how your light's hitting it, it looks like a, a flat, kind of smooth orange. Oh yeah, <laughs> it'll change uh, for wherever you guys are sitting. It probably looks different where Dave's sitting. So I'll read the back of it. Carol Shelby created the legendary Cobra in 1962 and changed the face of American automotive design forever. His Shelby Daytona Coupe earned the 1965 FIA World Manufacturers Championship, a feat which no other American manufacturer has ever matched. He has worked with Ford creating the 289 Cobra, Cobra Daytona Coupe, 427 SC Cobra, the racing GT40, the Mustang GT350, and the GT500, this guy, and Dodge creating the Shelby Charger, Lone Star, GLH, GLHS, CSX, and Viper, as well as the Shelby Series 1 from the ground up, utilizing internal resources and premium outsourced suppliers with his 40 plus years as an automotive innovator, Carol Shelby's legacy promises to reach well into the future with products such as the Ford Shelby Cobra, Ford GT, Ford Shelby GR1, and the 2007 Shelby GT500. 
So they're talking like 2007, like it's in the future, because this is from, when was it from, Dave? 2002. 2002. This thing is gorgeous. Uh, and it's got the thing on the bottom for his uh, charity there, if you notice, because that's what he was doing it for. Okay, you know what? I'm going to let Dave open up the one side of the box because it's his box and it's perfect. Give me a second, guys. Okay, thanks to Dave for taking it out. According to the seller, he had it out to take like probably bands off it and stuff. And we believe him because this thing is pristine. Seller didn't know a number on it. It sounds like the conversation Dave had with him, the guy, it sounds like he ordered it back in the day and it showed up and... Maybe somebody said it's a chase. It's funny because I'm looking at it now, Dave, and it looks like it's like a regular red in the camera. It's weird. And then I tilt it and it goes, uh, that is nice. So I love about the Shelby's guys, the uh, Shelby collectibles. They always have the nice name plate on the front. It doesn't look cheesy, anything like that. So, you know what, before we take it off a of base, we're gonna go around the car, we'll start at the trunk. Now this, if you're going for an Eleanor, again guys, you want the best of the best one of 18 Eleanor, Shelby Collectibles, if you gotta have the best of the best. No doubt about it. Wait till you see underneath the hood, that's what sold me, but. And of course, we're going to have a better look up on the look -see set. Now, his dashboard has the little Carol Shelby facsimile signature on it. See that detail? That's cool, eh? Some of them actually don't. We opened one recently that didn't. I can't remember if it was an Eleanor or what it was, but... The gauge cluster is always done very, very good on it as well. But for Eleanor, guys, you're looking at the top. When I started collecting the movie cars, I went into the one of Can the Canadian one of eighteen group with a list of my cars, and I said, "Tell me the best of the best for every car." And those guys listed them, and this was what they listed for Eleanor, and they were right. But wow, can you imagine getting a low number car, something like this? Or finding it in the store, the thrill of that. Can you imagine that? Wow, that's not like finding an M2. But look, this is what sold me is under the hood. You've seen that, right? Yeah. yeah. That's what sold me is under the hood. So this has all of that, plus it's God knows, like... It could be a 1 of 200 car, guys. It could be a 1 of 100. It could be a 1 of 500. But it's an Eleanor Chase by Shelby Collectibles. Like, that's not an M2 Machines. That's... So what we're going to hope now, we're going to take it off the base. It's got a two-piece base. And we're going to check if there's a number hidden under the base. Because it's got a two-piece base. We're praying that we're going to get a number today. But we're going to see. Okay, guys. We got it off the one-piece base. This is where it gets the... Uh... And there might be a number under there. I remember doing these on another one and getting a number, but there might not be. This is the one where my other screwdriver comes in because you need a special one to get down into the deep part here. And this is specifically for that. Got it. for that okay there we go these four are the same I thought that was a different one because it's a different length okay so this is for the top four this one's for the inner four yeah you notice I have different screwdrivers for different cars because <laughs> over the years a lot of them are different Perfect. And it 
It's magnetic, so no flopping. So these four we're gonna put up here. Yeah. But we're not, I'm not gonna take all four out actually, because all four don't have to come out. A couple of them will stay in the base and two come out, I think, or something, but. Oh, really? Yeah, just so they don't get lost, they stay, stay in here. We could still remove it. They just don't come out as a little hole. Forgot you guys were there. We're all anticipating getting this off. I th I'm gonna let Dave pull it off. Actually, I'm gonna get it down to the last thing here and let him. We're hoping there's a number under here, guys, because it might be a low number. That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping he gets. No. Nope. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. I've seen numbers on Glens on these before. Nothing, eh? Shelby collectibles. Darn it. Okay, anything in the trunk? At least we could get good glamour shots, and I could take out my Shelby from my normal one and show beside this one. And that's good, a magnifying glass like that with that. That's a nice nope. piece Glenn's got. Oh, wait, you see something? Nope. Actually, you know what? Check the trunk. Because me and Glenn, remember, Glenn? We found one in a trunk or something. Yeah. Nothing in the trunk, eh? Nope. Yeah, there was a car. I can't remember what one, but we found one, Dave, in the back of the trunk, like, hidden. I was like, that was... It was cool, though, when yeah. we found it. But, yeah, at least you're going to get... Oh, guys, look at that. And I'm going to get... I'm going to get the uh, other Shelby Collectibles Eleanor, my regular one from downstairs that I got unboxed to put beside this in a minute, but the, 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 the body, like sometimes you get the anodized chrome stuff, the older stuff, you see marks and everything. This is flawless. The guy knew he had it. Well, he, he doesn't know the number. He just knew it was something special. Like he knew that it wasn't, you know what I mean? But wow, that thing, you don't see a mark on it. Crazy. Just yeah. these guys are zooming in, we're checking engine bay, everything, trying to get a number. If anybody in the comments knows a number for these, let us know. For those that have never seen a Shelby Collectibles Eleanor, look at the details you're getting. Again, this is the best of the best. If you want an Eleanor, this is what you get if you're looking for the best. Just showing you guys from all the different angles. Even it looks like uh, carpeting or carpeting replicated in the trunk. Got the NOS bottle. Now we come over to the Canadian side, guys. That way you get that other view from over here. There's that Shelby collectible signature. Now, it's not a real signature on these cars, but I thought it was an awesome touch. There it, is. it looks killer just the way it is. And these are the cars that are kind of opposite to artisans or say a maestro where they do concentrate on where you don't see them. Detail on the bottom even. And look at that from the front guys. Check out this engine. Wow. When I seen that, that sold me on getting my Eleanor when I seen that wired engine like that. Now look at the difference, guys. That pink, I love that. It's supposed to be red, I think, but I, I'm going to call it pink because I like the pink more. I want it to be pink more, actually. But I think it's supposed to be red, but you could see underneath the engine bay, same exact details as my original one, except it's the chase. Just gorgeous. Let's just show you guys. Beautiful. They killed it. Okay, you guys know what's coming. It's glamour shots. It's what I always tell you guys. You could pay a thousand bucks for a car, but if it looks like crap in a picture, how good is it, right? So I think we know how this is going to look in glamour shots, and I'm not worried. I don't think Dave is very worried about it, but let's check it out. Dude, we got to give big props to Dave H. from the 905 crew for sharing this with us all today. Wow. And it may be one of, if not the rarest car ever featured on the Retro Collectibles Crack It Show. And I can think of no better place than up under the bright lights of the looks he set. It's like I told Dave earlier, and I'm telling you guys, people use the word rare a lot. Jump on eBay and type in, see what comes up.
if any come up for sale. Hard to get or rare? There's a big difference. My Flintstones car, hard to get. This, rare. Boom! Those glamour shots, eh, guys? Thank you. Big thank you to Dave H. Now, I'm going to make an appeal to you guys in a minute, but give me a minute here. Now, guys, that was an exciting car, and I'll tell you how it works. It's funny because I... I did a video this afternoon where I did just compared the Glenn's Elite Batmobile to his Super Elite Batmobile because I've had people asking me. So that video is going to be later. It's a good video, but I was actually going to ask Dave if he wanted to come tonight to either do a live unboxing or to come visit I would unbox it. And he called me. I was out of bed 30 minutes and he said, do you mind if I come over and unbox the car? I said, perfect, just give me time to wake up, like I was going to pitch it to him, but I thought he would be busy with his wife, because he's got a wife and he's got obligations, so it worked out perfect. So thank you to Dave for that, but the appeal I'm going to make, if any of you know production numbers for that, David Lamar, our friend, opened up a blue one, because he is big on these, and his blue one had a tag that said one or 200 or one of 300 on the bottom, I'm not sure. But that's how you tell something's rare, guys. Like my Flintstones car, I would classify it as hard to get. This is rare, there's a difference. You go on eBay, you see my, Flint you can order my Flintstones car, and get you one in five minutes. Try to get one of these. That's that's the difference. That's what rare means. Anyway, guys, if you have any information on this car, please leave it in the comments. Nate, you always surprise me with stuff. Leave information in the comments. The only information we're finding is an old Chinese website that does not give a number that wants 4,000 yen for one, and it doesn't look legit. And there's somebody else that says it's a rare car, but doesn't they, they don't know the number. So anything like that, guys, let me know if you know it. Anyway, thanks so much again for popping in, guys. And thank you to Dave for bringing this car by tonight. We had a live studio audience for it. And uh, we will be back again, maybe with Dave's car. Uh, actually, I'll show you guys that one quickly before we go. So this, uh, Dave, I think is going to let us check out. I don't know if it'll be tonight or not. It won't be in this video. I know that. But this has to be de-strapped. It's an older one. Look at the beautiful condition of that box, guys. You can see all the ribs on it. This is special because it's a 1 of 5,000 hobby edition. You don't usually see them often. I've never seen one like this. And um, they call it Kansas City Twister. Kansas City Twister is the name of it, actually. Thank you, Dave. I have never seen one like that. And we think this is going to have a number on the bottom of it. So that's one we're going to get into. But that's for another video because I would not want to take away from the awesomeness of the car we just unboxed. Because, guys, you know I like rare stuff. It's pink, it doesn't have any marks on it, it's not damaged like the anodized stuff, and whoo, that, you can't buy it. Go online and try to buy one, you'll see. Anyway guys, thank you so much for tuning into that special episode that I was pumped to see, because I have never seen one of those up close. I was excited about it, let me tell you, it looks a lot better in person. I was catching hues on that color when it was going around on the turntable, whoo. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching. Take care. Love you guys, and happy hunting.